Hello everyone, this is RJ, and I'd like to welcome you joining me in this time of prayer. As we are walking through the scripture and also having a time to read together, I pray that this will be a time for us to pause and see how God restores God's purpose and God's love and also restores our soul. And I, I wanted to share that I just really appreciate you uh, coming to the scripture and praying and asking God for God's will to be done. And today, as we are going through the topical uh, Bible reading schedule, we're nearing to the, to, toward the end of the fruit of the Spirit and kindness. In today's verse, I, I have to emphasize how much I love this one. It says from Jesus, from Luke chapter 6, If you love those who love you, why should you be commended? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, why should you be commended? Even sinners do that. If you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, why should you be commended? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be paid back in full. We talk about kindness. But if we just uh, remain in kindness and the human nature, doing good things, Jesus clearly says, that's what even sinners do. And why are you asking to be commended by just doing the things that normal good people would do? And I do have to say, a lot of the times Christians have this misconception that being, living in a good life is becoming a good Christian. And I have to say, becoming a good Christian, or I don't really like that word, becoming a disciple, has far more than just being and living a good life. Becoming a disciple or follower means that we are, our life is intertwined with God. And I'm using a verse from uh, a recent book that I'm reading, Get Your Life Back. But our life is intertwined and in unity with God that through us, we see how God's love stretches out and God's kindness stretches out into our lives. So that kindness looks more like this. It looks more like instead love your enemies, do good, and lend ex expecting nothing in return. If you do, you will have a great reward. You will be acting the way children of the Most High act, for He is kind to ungrateful and unwick unwicked people. Be compassionate, just as your Father is compassionate. So the kindness, the compassion that we show into the world is imitating what Father, our God, our Lord's compassion should be to this world. Merely being kind is not enough. It has to come from the unity that we have in our Lord and it has to overflow God's compassion in our, in our life, God's kindness in our lives. So let us ask for God's kindness to be shared through our lives. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you for this time that we can come and we can pause. We can read your words and be challenged by your words. And we know that only your words can transform. Your words can make sense. Your words is enough for us. And as we ask for your words to be alive, we ask that your kindness will flow through us. Not human kindness, but the kindness that is beyond good. The kindness that stretches out to all people. That kindness that stretches out and pours out to everyone, even is something that is sounds impossible we know that it is possible in your ways because you are the source of everything 
that allows impossible to become possible. So we come to you and we offer ourselves so we can be united in your love and we can Im imitate your compassion unto this world. So join us as we pray in a simple prayer asking, Lord, restore the unity I have in you so I can share your kindness into this world. Let us pray together. As we continue to pray, let us pray and intercede for this nation, this nation that is struggling with the pandemic of COVID, and this nation that is struggling with a national identity crisis, this nation that is struggling to see the injustice this nation that is hurting. So let us pray together and intercede. Let us pray. I'd like to join, ask you to join me in the prayer that our bishop had asked us to pray every day. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for your blessing, past, present, and future. You are a rock and the source of our hope 
in all things and at all times. As Jehovah Jireh, our provider God, we ask you this day to stretch out your mighty hand and eradicate from the face of the earth forever this virus called COVID-19 that is spreading rapidly from continent to continent. We also pray that you, Jehovah Rapha, our healing God, would place your hand upon all of those who have been stricken by this virus and restore them to full health. Be with those who have lost loved ones and are grieving. Protect all who are caring for those with this virus and keep them from contracting it themselves. Calm our fears and provide us with your peace that surpasses all understanding. And help us to hold firmly to the hope that only you can provide. Unify us that we, the Virginia Annual Conference, may be able to experience anew the promise of your presence in and through the unity of our faith, hope, and trust in you in the days ahead and forever. We offer this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us also continue to pray the prayer that our Lord had taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you once more for joining me in this time of prayer. And I want to ask you to pray throughout this weekend as we are celebrating uh, Independence Day. Pray for this nation. And I pray that you will be safe and healthy. And I'll see you next Monday.